The Chrysler Turbine Car, as man moves forward. Over a decade of research and testing had evolved the most advanced, most practical gas turbine engine ever specifically designed for automobiles. But now that this engineering achievement is here, perhaps it would be well to consider just what is a turbine? What is a turbine? Actually, a turbine is a highly advanced use of one of man's oldest means for creating power to do work, the windmill. The windmill, as most of us know it, consists of a number of curved blades called vanes mounted on an axle. A breeze blowing against these vanes causes the windmill to turn and to supply power to do many kinds of jobs. As the wind increases, the windmill spins faster, provides more power, the turbine, acting as a controlled windmill, makes today's jet airplanes possible. But its use in a passenger automobile is substantially different. First, we'll lift the hood on the gas turbine car for a look at the engine. Now, looking down on the engine, we can, through the use of animation, get a clearer picture of how the turbine engine works. To perform efficiently the functions of an automotive power plant, Chrysler Corporation's gas turbine was designed with these main units air compressor, combustion chamber, first turbine wheel for compressor drive, second turbine wheel for driving the car, regenerators or heat exchangers. The air compressor sucks in outside air and compresses or squeezes it to raise its pressure. Compressing the air raises its temperature to more than 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This compressed hot air flows through the regenerator where it is further heated to more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, then into the combustion chamber into which the fuel is sprayed. The fuel, ignited by a single spark plug, is burned and further raises the air temperature to 1,700 degrees. Then this now red-hot tornado of air or gas forces its way past the blades of the first turbine, whose job it is to turn the air compressor, regenerators, oil pump, fuel control, and other necessary accessories to make your car function. The hot gas then turns the second turbine, which is connected to the rear wheels to drive your car. But that isn't the whole story of the turbine engine's operation. Two other major elements make the gas turbine engine practical for use in a passenger car. After leaving the combustion chamber and passing through the two turbine wheels, there is a dip in the temperature of the gases as they flow to the exhaust. But the gases retain large amounts of heat, which would be wasted if merely allowed to escape unhindered through the exhaust pipe to blister the paint of cars following. So a device for salvaging this heat is placed in the path of the outrushing gases. This is the famous Chrysler originated rotary regenerator, which is basically a heat exchanger. To more easily understand the role of the regenerator, let us take a closer look. To do the job, the regenerators turn slowly, transferring heat energy from the exhaust gases through special heat transfer surfaces to the high pressure cooler air being pushed by the compressor on its way to the burner. This eases the burner's job of raising the gases temperature on their way to the turbines. This preheated air requires less fuel and permits the turbine to develop fuel economy comparable to a piston engine. In the Chrysler turbine, the air itself is turned by special curved blades called nozzle vanes. These vanes change their position to direct the stream of hot gas against the turbine blades at different angles. Economy for cruising, or greater power for acceleration, or even a braking effect for slowing and stopping. In spite of the increased efficiency of the engine, the gas turbine is simplicity itself. It has only about one-fifth as many moving parts as the common piston engine. Because it is self-cooled, the turbine needs no radiator nor antifreeze. There are no timed events in the turbine engine, no need for a distributor nor a carburetor. There are no tappets, no valves, finally, no pistons rushing up and down in their individual cylinders. In the turbine engine, you have a smoothly efficient operating system which burns almost any available fuel. Unleaded gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, jet fuel. You have no low temperature starting difficulties, no engine warm-up period necessary.